Hey there, good morning and happy Tuesday. Thank you so much for making the time to catch this replay. Today I'm gonna to be chatting about um, how less is more specifically related to the content that we are putting out there. So if you're watching the replay and have any questions, please drop those in the comments below and I will come back and answer every single one. And let me know that you watched the replay. Share with me where you're watching from or just comment with the word replay. For those of you who are joining me live, I am so happy and thank you <laughs> for joining me live today. Um, we are going to be diving in to talk about um, why less is more. And this has come up for me in a couple ways over the last week and different conversations that I've been having with folks. And um, this really impacts all areas of your business, but especially in your message. So we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of short versus long content, both written and video, and why a focused message is so powerful no matter the length of your content. Now, if you don't know me or don't know me well, my name is Carrie Price. I'm a brand messaging coach helping ambitious women business owners find and own the words to stand out, be heard, and make your message roar. Hey, Lori, so glad you could join me. Thank you for being here. Warm hugs from St. Pete. It's going to be 76 today. That's crazy. It's only January, but I'm sure you guys have great weather. All year long. Hey, Linda, so good to see you. Thank you for being here. All right, let's jump in. Now, <clears throat> let me just acknowledge that there are a lot of differing opinions about content length, and that's okay. I'm gonna share with you mine and why, um, but this, is like, there's, I'm gonna say there's no right or wrong answer as long as it's effective. So if what you're doing is not effective, then maybe it's time to rethink some of your content strategy. And again, this is gonna apply whether you're putting out written content, posts, blogs, emails, um, things like that, or video content, whether it's Facebook Live or pre-recorded. And so one of the first things I want you to think about, and by the way, the reason I'm talking about this today, let me just backtrack a little bit. The reason I'm talking about this today is over the last couple weeks here in the messaging mini classes on Tuesdays, I've been talking a lot about content, content strategy, especially in light of all the stuff that's happening with the Facebook algorithm changes, right? Um, but it's about that we get really smart um, and really strategic with the content that we're putting out there. Remember you guys, that's all marketing. Everything that you put out is a brand touch point that um, builds your reputation, right? Which is your brand, it's what people think about you. So I want you to be thinking about um, all the content that you put out there, let's be smart about it, right? I'm working on getting way more strategic. Last week inside the messaging den, I did a behind the scenes talking about my new content strategy, still in the works, but I, you know, just shared with you guys what I'm working through in my own content. Um, and so I think that this is a good natural follow on to some of those discussions. And I was having a really interesting conversation with my husband around this topic that he's also in the branding and advertising space. And um, it just, there were so many good things that I was reminded of in that conversation. So I thought, yeah, let's jump in and talk about that today. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, Tracy. Thank you so much for joining me live today. Okay. When you are looking at the content that you're putting out there, whether you just put out written content or you put out video content or both, whether it is short or long or both, there are a couple things to consider. Um, and again, there's differing opinions on this and I'm sharing with you mine today. Um, but one of the things to think about is how you like to, you personally like to consume information. Are you, do, are you a person that likes to read and maybe you write better? Or are you a person that likes to consume video or you're more comfortable on video? So you look first kind of at the perspective of how do you like to consume information and how do you like to create content? So for example, I will still be a proponent that everyone should learn to get more comfortable on video, especially with Facebook Live, because it's such a great way for people to get to know you, like you, trust you faster, okay? Somebody can watch a video and they're not only hearing your great content, but they're seeing your personality, seeing what it might be like to work with you. So video is still, I'm, I'm still always going to be a proponent of video. Just so you guys know, I wasn't always comfortable on video. So that, I mean, I... 
for me to say that actually says a lot. But if you are more comfortable writing, like you like the process of writing and being able to edit it and massage it and fine tune it, you want to make sure that as part of your strategy, you have written content. Doesn't mean don't do video. It just means, you know, you might do more blog posts instead of videos, for example. You might do a shorter video leading to a longer blog post. Um, but the more important than how you like to consume information or even how you like to create it is what's your ideal client like? Like, how do they want to consume information? And this is a tough one for me um, because we've got to be able to feel good about what we're putting out there. And I do believe you should put a variety of content out there in a variety of different ways to appeal to different people. But as you really laser in on who your dreamiest client is and what they're looking for, what is it that they want to be able to see in your marketing content to know that you are the person that they want to work with? You've got to keep that in mind. Okay. So for example, I have some clients who probably hate video and, and don't ever watch me on video, or maybe they don't consume a lot of video. They want to see things written. And to be honest, I probably don't do a very good job of that yet. That's part of my new strategy. Um, there's probably people who do love just watching videos. They don't want to have to read, especially a long thing. Like, just tell me what I need to know and communicate that to me in video, right? So I think that just like learning styles, some people learn better by hearing it, some people need to see it, some people need to write it or read it, right? Like there's gonna be different learning styles. You wanna keep that in mind as you are creating content. But let's talk about the pros and cons of short versus long. At, at, like, at the highest level, like if you were to ask me short versus long, which one, hands down I would always say short. Um, that shorter content wins. Now, there are exceptions to that, but let's talk a little bit about that. And this is going to apply both to written content and to videos, but let's be honest, people are busy. And when you're, we're all inundated, right, with information, just the Facebook feed alone, let alone your email inbox. I don't know about you, but man, I have completely neglected my email inbox. And like last night I was trying to get caught up and I had emails from a few days ago that I hadn't replied back to people on because we just get so much stuff, right? So people need to know it's going to be worth their time to consume your information. And so if you can make it short, impactful to the point and get your message across in a really powerful way, in a way that's gonna stand out for them, short will win. Same thing with videos. Now, Facebook Live videos are maybe a little bit different than pre-recorded videos and I'm taking a different approach for both of those. Like I'm gonna have pre-recorded videos that are gonna be like on my YouTube channel and in a blog and things like that. Those will be three to five minutes, like on one topic, talk about one thing so that people can come and consume targeted information, right? Facebook Lives tend to be a little bit longer. Now, Facebook encourages that. The longer that you go live, the more likely they are to let your live be seen by people um, and show people who follow your page or as people interact with you, like there's more of an opportunity for people to jump on with you live. But I still think there's a time limit. Now, there are, some people would say, if the content's great, I'm going to watch no matter how long it is. And that's probably true. There are people that I follow that, um, or like there's been really beefy, juicy Facebook lives that have been packed with information and it's kept me hooked the whole time. Here's the thing though, when I'm catching a replay, my uh, reaction to a long video is different than when I do catch it live. Hey, Jennifer, so good to see you. When I catch a live video, like the person's got to keep me engaged and entertained the whole time. And if they do, I tend to stick around and you sort of lose track of the time a little bit. When I go to watch a replay and I start it and I see how long it is, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I'm like, that's, that's too long. I don't have that much time right now. Unless it's somebody that I'm already following and they hook me in the beginning. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today too. Hey, Victoria, thank you so much for joining me. So good to see you. So um, the for the most part, I'm a fan of short content. It's how I like to consume information. And I value the time of you as a watcher or you as a reader if you read my written stuff. 
Um, like when, th there are a few long emails that sometimes like as part of a launch sequence or, you know, promoting a program, sometimes it's longer and they do it because it's a formula that people say works and I'm, you know, testing that out. But honestly, like if it's too long, it makes me uncomfortable. So I'm always looking for opportunities to shorten it. Yeah, Jennifer, you're the same way. You know, we're all so busy. It's got to be good, right? So here's some things to be thinking about because we might have like a lot of great content. I'll be honest, this morning, <laughs> I even sat down. Here's some little notes. I have my notes written on a, on screen, but this morning while I was journaling, I had these other thoughts. I'm like, oh, I'm going to add those to my Facebook Live today. Nope. You know why? Because less is more. It's not about throwing more content out there. It's not about um, it's like saying everything in one post, right? It's about making sure that the content that you're sharing is valuable. And yes, we want engagement. We want people to get something out of it and want to interact back with us. Um, oh, Tanya has a, has a good point. She says, I'll follow you live anytime I'm online, but I'd love to have a written recap of what I've missed if I join later. Yeah. I'm kind of the same way too. Like when I join people live, I'm like invested in the live and you get to interact. And that's like the cool thing about it being live, but on a replay, sometimes you want to know like, okay, here's where the good bits are <laughs> to jump ahead or a recap. So yeah, I'm going to start doing a little bit more of that, Tanya, maybe less around my lives, but definitely more around video, uh, pre-recorded video content. I'm going to have like a video version and a written out version. Um, and I'm going to start to see what people like, but here's the thing when you're putting content out there, what can you do if you have like a ton of things to say? One of the best tips I heard from somebody is, you know, like a lot of people will write a post or do a live. It's like my top 10 favorite whatever's, right? And they share all 10 in one piece of content. That could be overwhelming for people. It could be too much. And that is an opportunity to have 10 distinct pieces of content whether that's 10 videos, 10 posts, to, you know, whatever. Now you might summarize all of that in a blog. So blog posts are one of those places where people normally do expect or are okay with it being a little bit longer. Like they want to go and get the, like the meat beefier part, right? They want to dive in and get more details. So if you want to write long form content, that's like that one great piece of content every week do it as a blog post, but then repurpose small bits and share those small bits out. So maybe those top 10 things, you have 10 different posts and you're sharing what each of those are. And to say like, Hey, to see the other nine things that I think are great, you can go read the full blog post. So there's a way to balance long form content with short form content. And same thing with your videos. I'm going to start doing this. I, I, um, Tested this out a couple weeks ago. I'm going to try again this week. This live video right now is going to be a little bit long, not too long, because I am going to try and keep it to maybe 20 minutes today, but I'm going to take an edit out like snippet of it to share on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn, a teaser of the topic so that I could get people's attention, let them watch me a little bit and drive them back to this video if they want to know more. So there's things like that, like, so there's a purpose for longer content, but you, there's so many great things you can do with shorter content. So lists are great at breaking, um, you know, to break apart into multiple things. If you do write a long form email or a blog post, bullet points are great. Make it really easy for people to scan for the information that they want. Clearly define sections so that they can jump ahead to the thing that they care about. Make it easy for people to consume your information, right? Now, one of the things that um, people... Oh, Jennifer says, that's a great idea. Awesome. Tanya says, you understand me. Yeah, we we are all trying to consume a ton of information, right? So one of the ways that I'm starting to think about my own content is everyone talks about a funnel, right? And a funnel, it starts wide. You can't see me. My funnel starts wide, like right of all the people and like smaller groups of people, you funnel them down closer and closer to you to learn more about you and what you offer and less people make it all the way through the funnel. If you imagine the top of the funnel being wide, here's my theory and kind of like what I like to do at the outer edges of the funnel. When people are first encountering me, I want that to be short. The closer you get to me, it might get more beefier and longer and more detailed, right? But if you're first encountering me in a post, a social media post, or you're coming to check out 
you know, my Instagram profile, whatever, those things are probably shorter, like just to get to know me, kind of like dating, right? Like maybe you just have a couple conversations with somebody, you meet them and like over time, then maybe you go out on a date. The whole same thing applies in your business, right? Like you got to just let people get to know you and know that they maybe want to go on a date with you, right? Before you go away for the weekend, before you propose, before you get married, right? So I like to think of the outer edges of my content to be shorter. What are the things that I can get people's attention really fast and get them to want to know more about me, to come find the next place? Maybe it's a Facebook Live with me on my business page. Um, then maybe it's to come join a masterclass which is an hour, then maybe, you know, you get some of my emails and those start short and maybe they get a little bit longer. I'm reworking my whole email sequence too. So, um, it's kind of like give you a little bit of information. And then if you want more, then I'll give you more, but I still want to break it down and make it consumable, right? So let them get to know you in small consumable pieces. Now, one of the places that people really tend to like make it long, even me, even though it makes me uncomfortable, is if you have a sales page for a service offering or your product, because, and there's a lot of formulas out there for how to write a sales page every, you know, to tell you like what to put in what order. But if you think about it, it's because your sales page is kind of like replacing a sales call in a lot of ways. You might still get on a call with somebody, but there's a lot of information that they need to know to know if they are interested in that service. Now, Chances are they've encountered you before, right? They've been on the outside of the funnel and they've somehow gotten to know you better that are finally to a sales page. So it's not like a sales page is going to be the first thing that anybody sees about you um, or about working with you. So when they get to that point, you're trying to give them all the information to make a decision right? So they need to know, yes, are, are they the right person for that, right? Yeah, they have that problem. Yes, they want that result. Um, what transformation are they going to have? What objections might they be thinking that you've got to proactively answer to sort of walk them through the decision-making process for themselves to decide, do they want that or don't they? Are they ready for that or not? So a sales page actually does a lot of work, but again, it's not the first piece of content anyone's ever going to see from you, right? It shouldn't be anyway. Tanya says the seven contact points. Yeah, is that on a sales page? Yeah, there's so many different formulas, Tanya, that I've seen about writing a sales page. And then I have my own framework that I follow um, that makes a sales page roar. But, um, you know, just that that is one of the places where your content might be beefier. Another thing to think about in short versus long content is the level of commitment that people have to consume that, right? We talked about that. People are inundated. Um, You want to give them a low commitment of their time to consume your information, especially in the beginning. So, okay, you know what? If If it's a topic that sounds interesting, I'll invest three to five minutes in watching your Facebook Live or your pre recorded video. Um, and then, okay, you know what, that's interesting. Now, maybe I'll follow you. I want to hear more from you, but give them that low commitment entry point. And there's also this idea of micro conversions that all of your, everything you put out there should have some sort of a call to action. And the call to action doesn't mean sign up for my thing or buy my thing. It means you want people to just take action on it. That could be liking it, commenting it, whatever. The more people engage with you, you guys, this is why Facebook's all about engagement. The more you put out content that's actually engaging, that people do want to comment on it. They want to like it, love it, whatever. They want to share it because it's valuable. These are actually micro conversions. That means people are getting used to interacting with you. They're getting used to take action because of something you're putting out there. So that ultimately, when they do get to the point to sign up for your freebie, book a call with you, or invest in working with you, you kind of, they're in that habit of like, I like your stuff. I interact. I like your stuff. I interact. Oh, she's offering this thing. Okay. I'm going to interact with that. Right. So it's also like levels of commitment and micro conversions. Okay. Regard. Oh, here's one of the things on the, so we talked about on the, on like a Facebook live, if I'm watching a replay and I hit start and it's like 45 minutes, I'm like, ugh. Here's what makes me watch it, even when it's 45 minutes or an hour. You got to hook people from the beginning. A lot of people um, start their Facebook Live and they know there's a delay. There's about a 15 second delay from the time that you start going live until it actually goes live on Facebook. 
And then, you know, people aren't like sitting there waiting, right? So there's probably a 15 to 30 second delay. I used to do the same thing. I used to make this mistake. I'm like, hey, I'm just going to hang out for a little bit, see who wants to join me live. And you just like, chat like just to fill space and maybe you wait a minute i used to do that and i used to put in the description you could skip to minute 238 you know two minutes 38 seconds for it to start but like that doesn't hook you keep you hooked to staying on right you need to start out of the gate in those first 15 seconds talking to the people on the replay. You've got to hook them and get them to want to stay on. You've got to tell them what you're going to be talking about um, so that they're invested in staying, even if it's the replay. Same thing with your written posts, even if it's longer. We're going to talk, I'm going to talk about um, like the super long Facebook posts in a second. But you've got to hook people. And, and there's an art to this. Um, it's a good headline or that good lead in both in written or in video form, just like your impactful introduction. You guys hear me talk about creating your impactful introduction, right? You have seven to 15 seconds to get people's attention and keep it before they like have decided they're going to move on. That applies to your content too. So you've got to hook them right at the beginning so that they know why am I going to invest time in reading or watching? And then get to the good stuff, okay? I know on a Facebook Live, like I like to greet people too as they're joining the live, but don't get so distracted by that that a replay person, some, you know, somebody who's catching you later is like, could you just get to the point already, <laughs> right? Like get to the meat, give them something really valuable so that they'll stick around. Yeah, I love that Facebook Lives let, let us have interactive conversation, but just to make sure you don't get so sidetracked by that, that your content's not like staying on topic, right? Regardless of the length. Oh, I, I'm sorry. One more thing. I said I was going to talk about the long form post and I forgot to grab my sticky note. It's in my office in the other room. I actually tested. You know how when you are reading a written Facebook post and you get the read more, like it shows you the first couple sentences and then you read more and expands the post. And you know how sometimes when you do that, it opens in an entirely new tab. Like it does, this is on the desktop. It doesn't do this on mobile of course, but on your desktop, like it, it's so big, it won't open it in the feed. It opens in a new browser tab. The number of characters that it takes that triggers that, and I wish I would have grabbed it. I think it's 2,938 characters. That's what spawns it open into a new tab. That's a lot of content in a written post. So I will tell you this, there are very few and even people that I admire and follow, very few posts, even if I'm interested in that headline, when I click the show more, if it pops open a new tab, I close it before it even finishes loading. Like I don't have time to read 3000 characters in a social media post, right? If I wanted that level of information or content, I probably would expect like to give me the teaser and then I could go read the full article elsewhere. Again, differing schools of thoughts on this. Some people will post, like they'll share it in their email. They'll put it on their blog, the same content on the post because people might not want to jump around. For me personally, if it's got to open a whole new tab in my browser, like that's just too long for me to consume on social media. So think about the platform where you're putting it. For example, Instagram only allows videos up to 60 seconds, up to one minute. Like there's a limit. Facebook, you can talk all day on your videos, right? They don't care. Instagram has a limit. So think about what platform that you're on to make that message, um, to make your content apply to that medium, right? No matter how short or long it is, it's all going to come down to your message, you guys. You could have a really short post. Like if you follow a framework, I have a four-part framework for how to write anything that I share with my clients. Um, if you even follow the framework and it's short and sweet, but the message isn't relatable, one of a kind, actionable, reliable, like if it doesn't do those things, it's not going to work. If you have a long post that you think has a lot of beefy, juicy information in it and it doesn't roar, it's still not necessarily going to be valuable, right? If it doesn't speak directly to your ideal clients, if it doesn't establish you as an expert, if it doesn't help people reliably recognize you, know, like, and trust you, then it doesn't matter if it's short or long. I, I, really, the conversation is moot. If you do not have a strong message to communicate in any of those marketing platforms, right, marketing techniques, brand touch points, You've got to have a strong message behind it because that strong message is what's going to get their attention and keep it. 
It's knowing how to speak directly to your ideal client about things that they care about. And it helps them want to know more about you, to go find that other information. Every post you put out there does not have to be the be all end all of everything that you believe. You have to share valuable information and get your people to want to know more. So that's the key things that I wanted to share with you today. If you want to see how one of your recent posts or videos might be relating and see if it roars, come inside my group, The Messaging Den, and share it. Share your video. Um, if it's on your business page, you can just share it directly in. If it's on in a group, it's private. You won't be able to share it because we won't be able to see it unless we're also members of your group. But if you want to share a video or you want to share your most, pick your most recent post, written post or a blog post or anything that you've put out there, drop it in the messaging den and I'll give you my first impression of it and any feedback on what might make it roar just a little bit better. So you can find the messaging den by searching for it right here on Facebook or go to themessagingden.com. You'll also get additional support from me all throughout the week. But if you want to just get some immediate feedback on your content, short or long, you, I'll be honest, you know I'm a fan of shorter content. So if it's longer, I'll let you know if it was interesting enough for me to continue reading or watching. Because if it's not, I won't. And I'll stop and tell you why. All right. Um, in the meantime, just be really strategic about the content that you're putting out there, wherever you're putting out there. But make sure that what you do doesn't sound like anybody else, does not make you blend in, but instead makes your message roar. Have a great day and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.